Hey, and welcome to my fall retrospective thingy of, uh, fall. So cool. Yeah, welcome. Weather was shit. Do you like over-the-top campy medical meadow dramas? More importantly, do you like explosions? Well, I've just got what is you. Young Blackjack. Probably shouldn't have watched all of it. I went into Heavy Object with no knowledge of the series, and this kind of went against me. You see, in the first episode, they set up this very big enemy. They set up this indestructible, godlike entity almost. They set up rules of war and all that, and like now this object is going against all those rules of war, so what I thought would happen would be that it would just be this one really long series about this huge fight against this one thing, and I was wrong. I was so, so wrong. What we got instead was a Buffy-esque kind of series, where there's like banter and villain of the week almost. We're still learning about the world at large, which feels more like the overarching plot. If you go into this expecting banter and explosions though, you'll have a grand time. Origami, the first season was really good. It was really good. And this season takes it a step further in which every episode feels like you're getting punched in the stomach. It's great, watch it. Now I've been following K-Project for a while, and it went from being good in the first season, to being okay in the movie, to me dropping it uh, when Shiro came back. Personally, I think it managed to draw out like, uh, Shiro's big return so much, that when he did return, that it wasn't that big of a deal. It was like, oh yeah, he's here. Great. Whatever. I don't care anymore. Drop. And it takes quite a lot for me to drop a series that I've been like following for a while. I mean, I'm still reading Holic. So hey, which one of the three regular Magic High Schools do you want to watch? None of them? Good choice! Oh, I want a gallery. I was expecting a lot out of this season. I wasn't expecting to gain a foot fetish. Okay, give me a second. I have to attempt to pronounce this and, uh... <laughs> it's gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. Who to wear your... Who to wear rumor no? Rumor Magic moji. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> the mask thing. Now the first episode of this was comfy. Like I just sat back, I watched it, and it was lovely. And I've watched a couple of episodes since then, but like I've gone back because of this and kind of started watching the other series of season of this <laughs> which I didn't know existed until I watched this, so it's so it's all good. I've heard that weird things happen in the like current season, so uh, yeah, be wary. But like the first couple of episodes are nice. Attack and Titan school thing. It seemed really cheesy and just like a cash in, but like I didn't get that far in it, so I can't really judge even though, well, I mean, wait a minute, didn't I judge the entirety of the last season based on the first episode? Ah, fuck it. Gundam Orphan thing. Um, it was grand. I, I got a few episodes in and then I dropped it, it was grand. Comet Lucifer looked really pretty. I meant to watch more of it. Didn't two months happen, so I probably didn't. <laughs> I'm not gonna, whatever. Comfy Evolution. Also super pretty. Also didn't get that far. Man, I just dropped everything this season. I will say that this is the series that I'm most disappointed about not keeping up with though. Because like, it was a really interesting style. Like, the storytelling methods were like, out the window, like, insane. So yeah, I'm hoping to go back to it. One Punch Man, I'll read the manga, it'll be fine. High School Star Musical, I was expecting The Miz, I shouldn't have been expecting The Miz. Also Matsu-san has been really enjoyable for me actually, I mean, I'm not that familiar with the source material, but you don't need to be, which is good. The series is very self-aware, which it kind of needs to be. For example, in the first episode it's talking a lot about like, oh will we be relevant? We probably won't be, but like what can we do about this? manages to tackle like really fast paced skits and like really long skits and like really emotionally heavy episodes like surprisingly well so it ended up being one of the highlights of the season surprisingly. Sakura san Naru Ishima no Ishiaitai no Mamatsura Shonen Shonen Yeah I watched a couple of episodes of uh, Sakura san and uh, I mean I didn't seem to be doing all that much with it, so I dropped it, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, it's like... And, and now we're looking at bones, and now we're looking at more bones. It's like, cool. Like, <laughs> is there gonna be more? Probably, but who cares? Everything Becomes F, the Perfect Insider, is... It? it? Okay, I better kind of elaborate on this a little bit better. 
First things first, the opening and endings are like really, really, really good. Like the opening is really fluid and the ending has like so many little references. And the song goes well with the weird visuals and the whole thing ties in with the really unusual kind of atmosphere that the series presents. However, the series itself isn't that good. But there's like one redeeming element in one episode. Um... Which, going into spoiler territory, <laughs> oh this is a terrible impressions video. At one point there's this conversation between two people but it deals with it in like flashbacks but the conversation is still happening within the flashbacks. So it's really interestingly shot and really interestingly presented but the setup for it is stupid. <laughs> the revelation was stupid. The preceding scene was stupid because it was English for like five goddamn minutes. So it's a really mixed bag, this one. Caro has a nice soundtrack. Can't remember the first episode of that well, to be perfectly honest. The Rupan Lupin the Third anime, like the new one. I mean, it's just dripping with style, it's like really cool. I mean, like the, the op is like really nice and like, and uh, I mean, I haven't gotten that far as is a recurring sentiment. <laughs> but like, I will because, um,. It's it's styling. I mean, it's a really different direction from where the series was kind of headed with, uh, like, Fujiko Mine. Um, but I haven't watched all that much of the Brupan Lupin <laughs> series in general, so, I mean, it's an interesting ride. I was actually going to completely bypass Showman Sample, but then, you know, I gave, a, like, the first episode a shot, and the first, like, couple of minutes were, like, pretty funny, and, like, the opera was, like, really nice. And then it flatlined for the rest of the episode. I watched like another episode or two, and then it just kind of goes between like flatlining and being kind of funny every so often. I... Hackadell started with one of my all-time favorite quotes, which is, uh, "Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic." You might recognize it from Civilization, but that's not the point here. Like the point is, is that that can be used as like a starting point for like a really interesting story, and. I shouldn't have been expecting that out of like the seven minute like at a time series. Admittedly the second episode then immediately went into like idle territory and it's like yep, I hedged my bets wrong. On the other hand Otsumatsu-san did like the whole idle thing in the first episode too. And that's a good series. Well except for the idle part, I mean, yeah. Idols kind of suck, don't they? I didn't get very far in White Knighting the anime because uh, I was having a bad time. So far I've been ending up uh, really enjoying Digimon Adventures Try, even though I really didn't expect myself to. Because like for a bit of context, like I, I'm not that invested in the series. I used to really like it when I was like small, but my last contact with it was probably the VHS tapes, of which we didn't have like the starts, uh, we just had like some weird middle parts, <laughs> you know those ones. So honestly Cab, going into this I didn't have that high hopes, I was expecting it to be like, you know, kind of a nice little continuation, I guess. I've heard a bit about people being kind of a bit upset about uh, the change of art style kind of thing, but I honestly think it's a really good move, like, uh, like the art style as is currently. Um, it kind of reminds me of like a mix of like S'mores and Robotics notes -y kind of thing, and I enjoy it. I mean, I think that especially seeing as that it's moved past like the age group of like small um, Kev to what it is now, that it kind of needed that refresh as well. So it would be really weird just seeing it like in the same style kind of thing. Uh, especially as well as things that they're kind of dealing with little things about like, I was like, oh hey, like, maybe it's bad that we're like destroying half the city. It's like, no it's not you idiot, is it? And, like end of fourth episode. Oh, maybe it is. Whoops. Actually, because it's a fairly major plot point, it looks like they put a lot of effort into the background stuff. Which is really nice because you end up with these like areas that like are really coolly put together. It's dealing a lot with change as well and I think it's uh, dealing with that really well so far. So I'm kind of looking forward to see how that pans out. So if it keeps up the pace it's going at currently, I think it could be really good. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, uh, maybe you could check out some of my other videos or something. But I, oh wait, no, I think I'm coming back. Quick, quick, do something!
And now for the best girl award, it is... Bishamon! Okay, admittedly that wasn't an envelope, but any season with Bishamon, like, Bishamon wins.